Hello, good morning, students. Uh, this is Dr. Samir. Uh, welcome back for another session on the topic of uh, welding. Today, we will see another special welding process, which is called as electron beam welding. So let us talk about uh, electron beam welding in, in this session. Electron beam welding, in short, we call it as EBW, is a fusion welding process in which the heat for welding is produced by highly focused, high intensity stream of electrons impinging against the work surface. In the previous weld, welding process, we have seen that heat is liberated uh, either from the chemical reaction or we have used an external electric supply to generate the heat. Here, in this special welding process, we are going to use electrons to generate the heat. Now, how would these electrons generate the heat? These electrons, which are liberated due to the potential difference between cathode and anode, will have high intensity. And this high intensity of electrons, which is having high acceleration, will hit the work surface. And due to the high intensity, it melts the work surface and it melts the two parts into one joint. The equipment used is similar to that used for the electron beam machining. In electron beam machining, the similar process where we use it for the machining of the different parts, the similar principle is applied here. Then what is the need for this electron beam welding? You can see in this slide, there are different materials that are metals or non-metals are in research. So availability of these advanced materials, there is a need to join these materials. By using the conventional welding process, we cannot join these metals or non-metals. If you look at this figure in this slide, which is figure A and figure B, this figure A is a multi-pass submerged arc welding, where we can see the width of the weld is wider. In figure B, we can see the single pass EBW. Single pass, in the single pass, we can see the weld from the top portion of the surface to the bottom portion of the surface. Very thin weld cross section have been observed for the single pass EBW. And also, the multi-pass submerged arc welding has taken two passes for a completion of this thick section of the weld. When you look into the other parts of this slide, the weld cross section of the EBW is thin and it's like a keyhole weld. We call it as a keyhole weld when the depth of penetration to the width is Hi. In the bottom of this slide, we can see the two different materials being joined using this electron beam welding. You can see that the chro chromium copper rod is welded to the stainless steel handle. Similar kind of comparison between the shielded metal arc and the electron beam welding can be seen in the figure at the top. Now the advantages associated using the electron beam welding gives rise the need for replacing the conventional fusion welding process with the electron beam welding processes. Let us 
discuss about electron beam welding. The electron beam gun operates at high voltage to accelerate the electrons and beam currents are low. So in order to generate the electrons, we use the electron beam gun with the high voltage to accelerate the electrons. The acceleration of electrons are typically in the range of 10 to 150 kilowatts. The power in EBM is not exceptional, but the power density is. High power density is achieved by focusing the electron beam on a very small area of work surface so that power density is based on. In this slide, it gives us the, the schematic diagram of the electron beam welding. This electron beam welding setup is divided into three different portions. When we see the figure towards the left side of this slide, the, the, the three different categories are beam generation, beam forming and guidance, and working chamber. The beam, in beam generation, we have a cathode and anode and a continuously supplying high voltage current. This cathode will, will emit electrons when it is connected to the high voltage supply negatively and it emits the electrons. This emitted electrons are attracted towards the anode where it is connected positively towards the high voltage supply. The cathode generally used in process is made up of tungsten or tantalum. Just below this anode, we have the beam forming and guidance. The electrons generated here in the beam generation now are accelerated with the, the, the required amount of striking the, the required amount of power to strike the workpiece. So this, in this process, the beam forming and guidance, these elect the, the stream of electrons are, are pumped into the beam forming and guidance. In this segment, it consists of the, the focusing coil and deflection coil. The electron beam which is generated is of the divergent nature. All the electrons which are divergent are focused using a focusing coil and a deflection coil. All the electrons are deflected to a convergent nature using the deflection coil. And just below the beam forming and guidance, we have the working chamber. In working chamber, the workpiece is rigidly fixed using different clamps. And this whole setup is carried in the vacuum. Now this high intensity electron beam will hit the surface of the materials that being joined. And due to the high acceleration of the electrons, it melts the base parts and upon solidification, the two parts are converted into a single joint. Towards the right, here we have the three-dimensional illustration of the setup. At the top, we have high voltage cable. And just below the high voltage cable, we have the incandescent cathode, which liberates the electrons. And here below the incandescent cathode, we have the bias cup. From the bias cup, the electrons are further moved down to the primary anode. The primary anode attracts the negatively charged electrons. And these electrons will be now having some kind of acceleration in them and they will be focused towards the deflection coil. The deflection coil is of magnetic uh, coils. So they will observe, observe the electrons which are scattered and 
and the focusing coil also observes the uh, the electrons which have been scattered the deflection coil will now converge the electron beam initially which is of divergent nature and will focus it on the workpiece which is placed in the vacuum chamber here the whole process whatever is going in the vacuum chamber can be viewed using a telescope the principle for electron beam welding is that the electron beams are composed of electrons that are charged particles having a rest mass of 9.1 into 10 to the power of minus 31 kg and can be accelerated in electron gun to relativistic velocities giving them high kinetic energy when these electrons are discharged from the electron gun initially they are at rest once they achieve the relativistic velocities they attain the kinetic energy this kinetic energy is converted into heat energy when it strikes the surface of the materials that we have to join at 10 kilowatts the electron travel at approximately 20% of the speed of light while at 200 kilowatts they travel at approximately 70% the speed of light electron beam welding process is carried in vacuum in this process electrons are emitted from heated filament called electrode these electrons are accelerated by applying high potential difference between cathode and anode which is which are in the range of 30 kilowatts to 175 kilowatts for a lower electron beam welding application of thinner materials we can use less potential difference for a thicker materials that to be joined we can use higher potential difference up to 175 kilowatts higher the potential difference the higher would be the acceleration of the electrons electrons gets the speed in the range of 50000 to 200 kilometers per second when high kinetic energy electron beam strikes the workpiece high heat is generated resulting in melting of work material molten metal fills into the gap between the parts to be joined coming to the little history about the electron beam welding this process was initially invented in the year 1950s in the atomic power field when the when it was first developed welding had to be carried out in vacuum chamber to minimize the disruption of the electron beam by air molecule this requirement was still is a serious incon a serious inconvenience in production due to the time required to evacuate the chamber prior to welding as we can see in this slide when the electron beam was initially developed the welding was carried in the vacuum because of the the electrons that are generated due uh, in the process were susceptible to the disruption by the air molecule so air molecules have reduced the speed of electrons subsequently the quality of weld is being affected so this there was a requirement for the process to be carried out without the vacuum now to remove the vacuum from the chamber we call this process sorry to remove the air from the chamber or to fill it with the vacuum we call this as pump down time as it is called and can take long as as long as an hour depending on the size of the chamber and the level of vacuum required today ebw technology has progressed to where some operations are performed without a vacuum but cost is a priority here three categories can be distinguished the first is the high vacuum welding ebwhv where the the vacuum is maintained between 0.132 to 
133 megapascals medium vacuum welding where the vacuum is maintained between 133 to 3.3 to the power of 6 megapascals and uh, non vacuum welding where there is no vacuum at all this process will take place in the atmospheric air condition in this slide we can see the effect of vacuum on beam when the vacuum is less that is the pressure maintained is 760 torr the beam is of divergent nature that is the beam scattered due to the collision of electrons with atmospheric molecules when it was maintained at 500 torr the beam has narrowed down again when we have sequentially reduced the the air from the chamber by increasing the vacuum the vacuum beam has been significantly reduced in its size and shape so this in 250 torr we can see the divergent nature in 50 torr it is maximum uh, look it will look like it has been looking like a, a a straight line and at 5 torr you can see uh, the beam is of uh, a non divergent nature the pump down time during work part loading and unloading is reduced in medium vacuum and minimized in non vacuum ebw any metal that can be arc welded can be welded by ebw as well as certain refractory and uh, difficult to weld metals that are not suited to arc welding work sizes ranges from thin foil to thick plate electron beam is applied mostly in automotive industry in aerospace industry and nuclear industry in automotive industry ebw assembly includes aluminium manifolds steel torque converters catalytic converters and transmission components in these and other applications electron beam welding is noted for high quality weld with deep and narrow profiles limited heat affected zone and low th low thermal distortion welding speeds are high compared to other continuous welding operations no filler material is used and no clutch or shielding gases are needed when we look into this applications of the ebmw ebw ebw is mostly used in the automotive and uh, aerospace and nuclear sector uh, in automotive industry eb ebw is used in in the assembly lines for the aluminium manifold and also we can see the application of uh, ebw in the aerospace and nuclear industry one of the advantages of ebm ebm ebw is that the weld is noted for the high quality with deep and narrow profiles and we have limited heat affected zone when we observe the cross section of the weld the heat affected zone is very narrow whenever the heat affected zone is narrow there is the possibility of obtaining good mechanical properties and the thermal distortions also minimum welding speeds are high compared with the other welding operations and there is no requirement of filler metal or flux or any shielding gases disadvantage of uh, ebw high equipment cost need for precise jo joint preparation preparation and alignment limitations associated with performing the process in a vacuum as we have already discussed in addition there are safety concern because ebw generates x ray from which human must be shielded so these are the disadvantages first is the 
equipment cost is very high then the joint prepare, preparation and alignment which is being done in the vacuum chamber with the help of jigs and fixtures and clamping is to be done and uh, limitations are associated in performing this process in vacuum as we have discussed with any welding process that has to be done in the vacuum it has to be uh, it has to be we call it this, uh, we call that as the pump down time so the pump down time it can generally take an hour depending upon the size of the chamber so this will automatically have an impact on the production where time consumption is more and in addition to this the safety concerns of ebw we must consider this because the generation of x rays which are hazardous to humans if the the people working in that environmental conditions or the operator who is working on this uh, equipment must be protected and must be shielded so that is one of the uh, these are the disadvantages of the electron beam welding so electron beam welding is a fusion welding process in which the heat for the welding is produced by highly focused highly focused and uh, so this is about uh, we have discussed all these things earlier so this was about the the electron beam welding process and uh, i thank the students uh, for listening to this uh, session on the electron beam welding and by the end of this uh, session the student will able to understand what is the principle of uh, electron beam welding and uh, what is the how the process of electron beam welding with the schematic of the electron beam welding setup then what are the different types of uh, uh, vacuum uh, high vacuum medium vacuum and no vacuum categories and also and also student will be able to learn what are the advantages and disadvantages of using this process thank you very much students happy learning stay home stay safe